Hi everybody, Mike Jarek here. Welcome to Thought for Food. It's a series you can find on the Jarek Report, which you can find on our website, box29.com. And now it's coming to television. It's a series that gives me a chance to sit down with the movers and shakers of the very vibrant restaurant scene here in the Delaware Valley. My first stop, well, it's a chat with the owner of a new restaurant at 20th and Spruce. It's called Charlie Dove. Welcome to Thoughts for Food. You know, you've heard Food for Thought. <laughs> this is Thoughts for Food. <laughs> and it's about, well, about restaurants. It's for people who like to dine out and certainly foodies out there. Uh, and you probably, if you're a foodie and you live in Philly or the Delaware Valley, you probably know this guy, Rob Wasserman. Thank you very much, Mike. The owner of one of the most popular restaurants, I would say, certainly in Philadelphia and maybe <laughs> the Northeast, <laughs> Rouge. If Rouge could talk, <laughs> it's over on 18th Street in between Walnut and Locust. But you also have the restaurant that we're in right now. Obviously, it's closed, but it, what is this? This is Charlie Dove. This is one of our newest restaurants for the area. You also have the place across the street. Correct. 20 Manning. Okay. And that's actually at 20th and Manning Street. But you also have other restaurants. That's true. Let's go. <laughs> so I am one of the partners of Snap Pizza, which is... Uh, a local uh, restaurant chain. We have about 11 of those, and we just actually opened up under that umbrella, Big Dean's Hot Chicken, and we're up to two units of that, too. By the way, I, I want to let you know that we're not on I-95 doing this, <laughs> but the if you ever do Audrey Claire and now Charlie Dove, one of the great things about this restaurant is it's big, open, open windows. And so it's going to be a little bit noisy and people are calling for reservations. <laughs> that's the restaurant business. Ah. <laughs> and going to go no, I'm going to go, I'm gonna go turn it off. So how long have you had Rouge? So Rouge has been around since 1998. Neil okay. Stein, the original owner and yeah. one of the founders of the restaurant, current restaurant scene in Philadelphia, uh, started that in 1998 and we took it over about 2004. I married his daughter, uh, his daughter yeah. Maggie. And Wait the rest is right. Is this how you got into the restaurant business? You married somebody's daughter? Oh yeah, I got suckered into this. This, wow. was, this was definitely not the industry I was looking to get into. <laughs> <laughs> what Listen, I love food, don't get me wrong. But honestly, I, I didn't know anything about the business, but I, I started reading books, Restaurants for Dummies. I mean, like it was the funniest thing. I had no clue about anything about the restaurant industry. But I understood business and I felt if I could get in the back end and understand how to, car it was like cardiac arrest for yeah. Rouge at that time. I had to cut away the fat and then trying to keep, sustain what Neil had created, which was this pearl or gem oh, yeah. a, a, of a restaurant. I think a lot of people think they would like to own a restaurant. I, Eve, I've thought about it because we have this image and fantasy of, it, well, you'll sit at the bar and talk to the clients and the customers and drink a cocktail and it's just fun <laughs> is it fun listen it has its moment like any other business i think the grass is never greener on the other side and a lot of people that like you just said would like to jump into the business or be a partner in the business they don't realize it is a business so it's not you can't just be sitting there you can't just be like schmoozing which is part of it with the, the customers but the nominal, as you see, we're here in the middle of the day. This d restaurant doesn't open until five o'clock, but you're, it's like buzzing. It's nonstop. Yeah, yeah, it's nonstop. So there's a business side of, of that that you really have to have control over. And a lot of these creative people, the chefs that romanticize, I'm gonna be the next Bobby Flay, I'm gonna be the next, well. they get into the industry and it's not like that at all. I mean, it's very few and far between that make it to that level of success. And I always say, that, you know, those are the geniuses of our industry. They're, they're not only just creative, they have a savviness and a business mm -hmm. side of them that allow them to succeed where most people don't. What's one thing that, you're, that you were, not about shocked? Uh, Understanding food costs, which is, a, you know. You, really? <laughs> if you can imagine understanding what it costs to plate a burger on, you know, and sell it. It's not a, it, it, there's so many ingredients that are involved, obviously. There's the service, there's the rent, there's everything else that's put into it that you have to make sure that you're covering your costs or yeah. you're, you're in a business to lose money. Um, what, is a, 
What's a reason that somebody wouldn't go back to a restaurant? What is your fear when a, uh, a customer comes in? I think it's interesting. You know, there's there's three components to, in my in my mind as to what a restaurant is. It's the atmosphere. It's the customer service. Yeah. And it's the food. Okay. So those are the three prongs that I rely upon. And if the food is just mediocre, but you have the most amazing server that just makes your day relaxed and enjoyable, and the vibe is okay, the energy is good, 99% of the time you're gonna come back. Yeah. Okay, so, but if the food is good, but you have a horrendous server that just forgets your you drinks you and off. pisses you off or whatever not, 99% of the time, you're not coming back. There's not many businesses, and I say this as a salesperson, that we have to be on from the beginning to the end of the service. Meaning like, when that person walks through the door and is seated by that host or greeted by the host, to the moment that person leaves the door and is like said, you know, give, given the regards or that they say goodbye to, like, there's not many companies or businesses that you have to be on for an hour and a half. Yeah. I, I always say there's some pixie dust that you have to sprinkle on. Even if everything's right, you still have to throw that little yeah. pixie dust on to make sure it, like, it's the finisher that this people are doing. This exhausting. <laughs> I'm never going to go into the restaurant business. <laughs> it's, it's 24 hours a day, it sounds like. It is a 24 hour day. All right. Let's talk about what happened with the pandemic. You're cruising along with these three restaurants and snap pizza and all that. And then boom, <laughs> COVID hits. Were you scared? Oh yeah, I think if you weren't scared, then you were blind and deaf and dumb to what was happening. I mean like that first month for everyone, not only in our industry, but it's the, the fear of the unknown. We just didn't know. And I think that scared the hell out of everyone. For myself, I have 400 employees, 350 employees. What was I supposed to do? Our walk-ins, our pantries, all had food in there. And now they just told us to shut down. So, you so lose all this foods, all this. So we literally, I, I took my main team together, my you know, my uh, chefs and everybody, and said let's create like care packages for our staff because we didn't know when anybody was going to be back i it was going to be a lost anyway on food and it was literally like boxing up and saying goodbye to these people not knowing when the hell we were going to see them yeah uh, one thing that saved you and it's maybe i'm wrong is your creativity or right. your team's creativity you took the restaurant and shoved it into the street as a lot of people did but you went above and beyond with this, the ski lodge. When it was cold in Philadelphia, you had a big white tent and a ski lodge inside it, with fire pits. It was incredible. And honestly, the people were there. And that, yeah. leading back to your question, the people wanted to be out. They yep. wanted to be safe and feel safe. And so we created that experience that allowed people to come out. Instagrammable, obviously, which oh, is the new God, social yes. media craze, which everyone wants to do. So that blew us up, and honestly, all through the winter. Now, again, it was only 26 seats. It's not like I had like a bustling restaurant, but it allowed me to keep all my staff, allowed us to continue doing business. You had the same amount of seats in the tent as you had in the side of the restaurant? No, no, day. no, 26 seats. Like, our inside restaurant is 60 seats. Oh, plus, I didn't realize that. Yeah, plus bar. And so we only had, we had limited seating, but it allowed us to at least to thrive and have people out and being busy, yeah. Where others had to shut down for whatever reason. Like so, then when in the spring when it warmed up a little bit, you turned the ski lodge into a, a garden, right? Spring exactly. Garden. So we pivoted again. We wanted to keep our creative and creative juices flowing. And Maggie Huth, who's my director of creativity, she was the one who really said, "Okay, let's. What's coming up next? What are we kind of kind of going to create?" And so let's do the garden aspect. Obviously, that sounded like the you know the smartest move. And it's again, we it, you know we have water fountains and we have some yeah. fun stuff going on over there, and it's just made a big difference for us. Was a 
weirdest thing you ever saw at Rouge. <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna th bring up a couple different fun uh, experiences <laughs> okay. that I've had at uh, at our restaurant. Uh, it had to be a couple years ago where we get a phone call and the hostess picks it up. Hi, this is Harrison Ford. Harrison Ford? Yes, Harrison Ford. I would like to come in tonight and have a dinner at Rouge. Well, the hostess thought this was a prank. Obviously, reached out to me and says, I'm not sure this is true or not, but we, you know, Harrison Ford called and wants a reservation. I said, how many people? One person. Just him. Just him. And I was like, well, this sounds really weird. I'm not going to be there, but if it's truly Harrison Ford, call me and I'll come in. Sure enough, it's Harrison Ford. By himself. By himself, walks into the restaurant. I am here to eat. My hostess was a gaga, obviously, and not knowing how to handle it. Sits the person down, you know, sits Harrison down. And the buzz starts happening in the restaurant. Yeah. Harrison's here, Harrison's here. And then you start seeing outside of Rouge, which is this really cool area, you know, like your outdoor area. On the peripherals, crowds were starting to form. Oh God. <laughs> and they were being nice enough not to come in, but it was starting to get crowded. So I go up to, I normally never bother anybody that comes into Rouge, but I felt it was prudent to let them know what was happening. So I go up to him and say, hi, Mr. And Mr. Ford, I'm Rob Wasserman, I'm the owner here. I just want to make you aware that there is a little bit of a, you know, crowds forming on the sides. But listen, I have an, you know, a back entrance back door. that when you're, take your time, relax, enjoy, no one will bother you. Once you're ready, you let me know and I'll escort you out through the back. And he's like, really, you have a back entrance? I was like, yes. He was like, fantastic. So he opened his book, he had a book, and he was reading and eating and having a great time. A couple hours go by and he, you know, calls for me and I come over to him and I escort him back through the kitchen, which screeches to a halt. Oh, oh yeah. Right. Everybody's wanting the pictures. Holy crap! Everybody's, everybody's like freaking out as Harrison Ford's in our kitchen. I walk him through the back door into the alleyway. I walk him, you know, like I'm chit chatting, really sweet guy, chit chatting with him. We take him, you know, I take him through the alleyway and he's on his way. He's like, thank you so much. I'll be back and blah. And you're like, it was wonderful. So, what did I do? As soon as I wave bye to him, I pick up my phone, my cell phone, and I call my wife and I go, you're not going to believe what happened. And she goes, what happened? And I said, I just saved Indiana Jones from Rouge. <laughs> <laughs> from the Temple of Doom. <laughs> oh, my she, God. She almost beat herself. It was, it was probably one of the best moments of my experiences well, there. I remember when he was in town for a few months shooting right. a film, and a lot of it was, it was filmed like, over on Walmart. Exactly. It was Gary Oldman, and yeah. there was a few of them that were there, and they I mean, they would pop in. And that was that's one of the fun experiences of Rouge, is that I think anyone that I can think of on the big screen has been through those doors, from Jack Nicholson to Justin Timberlake to Mick Jagger to, like, hold on, they've all been into Rouge? Not only been to Rouge, but multiple times during their stays and so forth. It is one of the hottest restaurants in the city. Well, right? it, it's comfortable, you know? It, it really I, I is. Listen, we're known for our burger, obviously. Yeah. And this is one something that's won national acclaim. I remember tw it was probably 20 years ago now. It was named the one, number one hamburger in America. It was, when, uh, yeah, it was. Uh, I don't know what magazine it was. It was Esquire. Yep. Yeah, Scott. That's and, it. and it was, uh, I forget the, 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 the person's name that had wrote about it, but we were in the top five burgers they have to eat before you die, which led to Oprah Winfrey then talking about it. Yeah. And then it was like insanity. <laughs> it, like, we literally went off the deep end with. And the people think when they get the one, they go over to get it. It's going to be this thing pile. You know the fad now. No, is a right. foot high hamburger. No, no. Was it Gruyere and meat and, and, and the, the caramelized um, onion? Yeah. And it's it and a fresh challah bun and I think you know the brioche and it's just great and it's just simple and it's juicy and I think that's what a lot of people miss out with all the yeah all the crew comments um, on that. It seems to me I was in there one night when uh, we heard that the Secret Service had called. Yes, yeah. What was that about? Well, we've had, you know, obviously uh, the Bidens live close by. And right. so we've had the opportunity to host the Bidens multiple times. And they're very, they're so sweet. And so they'll, uh, the, 
the, whether it's the daughter or whoever comes in, we again, I'm not one to make big fuss about it. No, because like, that's they would all like that. Right, exactly right. So it's very important for us to be. So if President Biden walked by here, would he recognize you? No, no, no. no he would definitely not recognize me. But I would still, you know, <laughs> schmooze him. Um, can, can you top Harrison Ford? <laughs> I mean, Mick Jagger's. Wait, wait, that's pretty damn. Wait, big. this is even better. This is even better. Oh, yeah, another good story. So uh, it was Demi Moore was in town filming with a couple other um, uh, people one night, and uh, they came in obviously, and they were having themselves a fantastic time. And you know, Rouge has a Rouge has a lot of regulars, and one of the regulars had a little bit too much to drink. And felt that they were going to be the next Ashton Kutcher. And it wasn't me, was it? No, it wasn't you. <laughs> and he literally went to the table and oh. sat down drunk and started talking to Demi Moore. Is and she in there by herself? No, she was in there with what a couple we, people. Okay. Oh, how and embarrassing. So I literally, so many panicked and ran back to me. I was in the back office somewhere. And they were like, oh my God, so many sat down with De you know, Demi Moore. Like, we got to get him. We got to get him. So I walked up and I apologized and I, you know, I, I grabbed, you know, the guy and I said, "Listen, like, you know, like this is not happening." And I pulled him away. And she was very, you know, she was very cordial about it. And obviously, it must happen often enough that people come up to her. But her, and then Bruce Willis was in. You know, he'll always be in because he's a nice guy. So, but they were in at separate times. Separate times. Separate times. Yeah. But. No, I think it's a it's a fun experience there in that way. You always find randoms there that mix with the the regulars and the and then the tourists. And so Rouge is a, like almost like a fabric, a piece of the fabric of Philadelphia because it's so interwoven with it sure is. with all the different areas of the business. And that that's very hard to come by and that's allowed us to be sustainable for 22 years. Like, Philadelphia is an incredible city where food is concerned. We really came into our own, in the, I guess, in the last 10 years with the advent of all these younger chefs that came from the Neil Stein, the George Perrier's, the Steven Stars, and the, you know, the Ellen, you know, Ellen Yens and so mm -hmm. forth. And that's what's so incredible. Like, we really have put ourselves on the map of the culinary world. And as you know, Michael Samanov, he has oh a yeah. the number one restaurant yeah. in the country. Yeah, it, it, that's incredible. Is that Zahav or that's Zahav? Correct. Yeah. And but that just shows you the, that which is it, it's an Israeli restaurant, obviously, and so it shows you the the character of our city that's so complex and has so many layers and ethnicities that allows us to succeed. If we're a very yeah. if we were very vanilla and we were just a normal like a, a a simple town. You want to have that complexity, and I think that's what's so much fun about Philadelphia. Well, thanks for watching our first edition of Thought for Food. If there is a restaurant you want me to visit or a restaurant tour you'd like to hear me chat with, hit me up on Twitter. My handle is at MikeFox29. Thanks again.